Hello everyone, my name is Petra and I will be playing the piano and talking about music with you today. Since we are all at our own homes instead of the concert hall, I wanted to make this event as much fun as possible, so you can sing, clap, play along or even dance. As you can hear, I have an accent. That is because I am from Europe, from a little tiny country called Slovenia. I started to play piano as a little girl and I hope I can convince you that music is a lot of fun. I would like this experience to be as interactive as possible, that's why I would like you to prepare just some essentials. Can we please ask parents to bring some boxes? I believe we all have enough Amazon orders that there should be a good size box laying around the house. And you will also need paper and crayons because I would like you to paint while listening to the music I will be playing. Let's get right into it. Was the motion of my right hand familiar to you? Did it remind you of anything you do at breakfast? If you guessed correctly, bravo! It's butter in the bread or la tartina di burro. This piece is attributed to the young Mozart. They say he was only five years old when he wrote it, although historians are not sure if maybe his dad was the one who wrote it. Now let's look at a piece that Mozart definitely wrote himself. It is the third movement of the sonata in A major, which most people know by its marking alla turca. By now, you have all noticed there is something off about my piano. I decided to open it up so that you can see how it works. I have been teaching piano for some time now, and I have noticed how much the mechanics of the instruments always interested my new students. This is a very nice upright kawaii piano, and it belongs to my friend. I opened it so that you can see the key mechanism. 
when I press the key, that sets into motion a mechanism which then moves the hammer to strike the strings. All this together creates the sound. And no, not the hammer like the one at your home, but the piano hammer. Does anybody know what the pedals are for? If I hold the right pedal, the dampers are not on the strings anymore and they can resonate for a long time. pedal brings the hammers closer, so the distance is shorter and therefore the sound is softer. Have you noticed how I used it in the previous two pieces? The middle pedal on an upright piano has a different function, so we will skip it for today. Instead, let's talk about music itself. What is music? I would say let's compare music to a cake. To make a cake we need quite some ingredients and the same goes for music. So today we will be making a recipe for music. Every time we will add an ingredient, I will display it on the screen. We all know music is sound. What sounds are we familiar with? Maybe the ones we make ourselves like laughing and clapping or turning pages of a book, clock ticking, waves crashing or birds singing outside. Music is art based on the organization of sounds in time. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean that our neighbor's barking dog is making music? The sound needs to be organized in time and pitch, so my neighbor's dog is not a musician quite yet. <coughs> The musical sound is organized into tones or what we call in music notes, those little tiny black dots, the highest or lowest of which is called the pitch. So our first ingredient in the recipe of making sound is pitch, which refers to the high and low sound. What we call the top on the piano is the high pitch and some say it sounds like birds. I will try to squeeze under my tripod so you can see my hands from the top of Bartok's Romanian dance number three. What do you think the pitch sounds like on the bottom of the piano? Think of what does it remind you of while I play Edward Grieg's piece in the Hall of the Mountain King. The piece is originally written for orchestra and I have combined it and shortened it just to show you how it sounds at the end. Thank you. 
exciting, right? The orchestral version of the piece sounds so colorful. In the meantime, I have been reassembling the piano back so that the strings and the mechanics won't suffer. Now let's move to the second ingredient of music, the rhythm. Bring out the box that we prepared and place it nicely in front of you. All it takes to create a beat is to hit two items together to form a rhythm or a repeating pattern of long and short. Let's try a pattern of two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now let's try three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. How about four? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now put your hand over your heart. Feel the beat of your heart, because your heartbeat is a rhythm. Now do 20 jumping jacks. When you're finished, put your hand over your heart again. The beat or rhythm of your heart is different now, right? Probably much faster. In music, every melody has a rhythm or pattern of long and short beats. A memorable melody will usually have a simple but interesting rhythm. Now we will imitate the rhythm of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star by following the pattern of long and short notes. <laughs> it on your box while I play it. Now think about the ABC song and sing it until the letter P. The rhythm changes at LMNOP, which makes it fun part to sing. Let's do the entire song now. What about if we look at some famous rhythm pattern by Beethoven? Let's figure out the rhythm pattern. Is it short long? Is it short short long? Or is it short 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 long? This is the pattern. Now try it on your box. And now try to catch me. orchestra into the video again. I won't do it again. Now we are getting to the real good stuff. Next ingredient on our music recipe is melody. We were just singing the melody to the ABC song and most of us remember that melody and can jump right back into it no matter what age we are. In music the melody is the tune or musical line of notes that our brains hear as one thing. A melody is made up of two previous ingredients, the rhythm and the pitch. One more song we all know is Happy Birthday to You. Can you sing it or tap it on your box while I'm playing?
Did you know that the happy birthday song was actually written as a good morning to you in late 1800s by two American sisters? It was later copyrighted as happy birthday to you. Copyright is also the reason why I am not letting you listen to more of the orchestral music, but feel free to go to revisit your favorite songs from today on YouTube anytime in their original formats and with great performers. Our journey to making the music recipe continues to the next ingredient, harmony. When I ask my students if they know what harmony is, they say it's when two people sing together. Have you ever heard people singing together? What about on the piano? Have you ever wondered what is my left hand doing while the right hand is playing the melody? Melody alone is lonely. Harmony is what gives us the idea of how to feel about music. It is as simple as changing the happy birthday to you into a minor tonality. How did that make you feel? Was it still happy? If I play only melody, we don't even know what to feel. The harmony helps us decide how we want the music to feel. So let's talk about the mood of the music or the feeling. Let's listen to the French song by Tchaikovsky. The texture of it was smooth, but how did it make you feel? Listen to the next song by the same composer and tell me how is the texture, smooth or bouncy? Next one is completely different, although written by the same composer. Should we try to look at the rhythm on our boxes? Let's try. Dum, taka, dum, 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 taka, dum, dum. Now a little bit faster. Now a little bit faster. But did you know that sometimes the harmony can be split between two hands and both hands get a shot at the melody?
that was just the beginning of the piece Un Sospiro by Liszt. I just have so many great classical compositions that I want to share with you that we just cannot listen to all of them today. The Wild Horseman that we will hear next is much shorter and you will hear the beginning part, the middle that is a little bit different and the ending part that is similar to the beginning, if not the same. The reason I wanted to play this one is because sometimes the melody can be completely moved to the left hand, as will happen in this piece composed by Robert Schumann. Listen to the middle part where the melody is completely in the left hand and don't forget how it makes you feel. The Wild Horseman. <laughs> listen to a much calmer piece by Eric Satie. Prepare the crayons. Are you ready? I want you to express your emotions by painting what you see in this music. Please take photos of the paintings you will create today and send them to this address. And we will upload them to our department's Facebook and Instagram. Parents, please help send in them. Are we ready to paint how the next piece makes us feel? Close your eyes for a moment, let the music speak to you, and then start painting. Ready?
Next on our recipe, we need to decide what we will call our music. Many times the music is simply dedicated to a special person. We all know a very famous tune by Beethoven who wrote this one for Elise. Some of the names we saw today were the Wild Horseman or the French song, if it reminds the composer of a specific place. Do you remember the piece in the Hall of the Mountain King? From the same suite of Greek, there is another movement that you should always be able to recognize. It's called the Morning Mood. <music> Another piece that is originally written for orchestra, but I just could not help myself wanting to play it just a little bit. Two composers sometimes write a piece of music with the same name. Let's look at two waltzes, one by Grieg and one by Chopin, both written for piano. Let's make it a trivia where you will tell what similarities and what differences are there between them.
Rhythm is the same, right? But the melody was very different. Do you think you could sing a little bit of the melody? And what feelings did they bring to you? They were not the same, were they? Most often, pieces pick up a nickname along their long life. Most often, the listeners give music a name, and although usually composers do not like that, some of these names really stick with the music. Let's listen just to some sections of such pieces. Have you heard of Ludwig van Beethoven's piece nicknamed Moonlight Sonata? I want you to paint or write a story. Don't forget to ask your parents to send it to this address. Now that you know the recipe for music, you need just the last secret ingredient, your own imagination. You will hear the pitches, the rhythm, the harmony, but I would really like to know what is your story to this music. The last two pieces are both called preludes. The first one is by Chopin, and second one by Rachmaninov. Let your imagination roam free, and if you would like to, make a painting that shows the thoughts that go through your mind as you listen to this music. <laughs> 